Good morning, folks. There is only one top story. Comet sighting spring will have its close approach to Mars in one day. This is what we've been waiting for, and we'll have a call to action for anyone with the ability to take astrophotos or even just observe through a telescope. As the sun sets, no matter where you are in the world, the red planet sets right after it. Our window of visibility is small, but just enough to get a glimpse. By tonight, you might be able to spot the comet approaching Mars, and tomorrow it passes close enough for the coma to interact with the Martian atmosphere. There will be a ton of satellites and other equipment monitoring the effects, but it'd be great to get some images of our own. The close approach is at 1828 UTC, so Europe gets visibility near the start of that close approach event. Now that's just after 2 p.m. Eastern Time, so the U.S. and Canada will have to wait a few hours to see the two bodies in the sky. But either way, get your photos and videos, share them, let's see what sort of interactions may come. If you are new to this comet, right below the video there is a link to some good information on our Comet Siding Spring playlist. Top flare of the last day occurred this morning. A moderate duration M flare at low levels caused a brief low level radio blackout in the Indian Ocean and over parts of the Middle East. Came from that region on the limb, which is at least visible now, one of the biggest sunspots of the year, if not the entire solar cycle. There are multiple umbras mashed together. It appears that at least some of them have complex morphology where positive and negative are mixing. This is what the flare uptick watch has waited for for days. 3M flares so far. Let's see what else she's got. We also have a small filament releasing on the north central disk. It appears ejecta is heading mostly north and should not be terribly geo effective. It's pretty though. Other top solar notes include a ramp in solar wind speed and density. That's yellow and orange. This caused some instability in our magnetosphere overnight. We'll keep watch there. One of the top stories is the coronal holes. Remember that the current opening is not as powerful as the one coming in behind it on the equator, like a sideways pyramid. You can see on ISWA that today's coronal hole is moderately strong, but tomorrow's takes the cake. Earthquake ramp up is expected. A couple other stories got a significant oil spill in the West Pacific. Cleanup is underway. Parts of Brazil are seeing a terrible drought where water is only at 4% capacity. That's near disaster. Tropics Watch has us monitoring three systems. Anna luckily stayed south and while it is affecting Hawaii, no doubt, a direct landfall will not be made. New Storm Trudy indeed hit the Mexican coastline and already began dissipating. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, Gonzalo threw a backhand at Bermuda. That's the second storm to hit after Faye came through days ago. The system is moving north quickly and may make it over to Europe as remnants. In the United States, please note the low in eastern Canada drawing moisture and heat up the east edge of the convergence while cold air is driven down the west side and reinforced by a high pressure cell to the west of the low that is pulling north hard on its western side. That's how you get temperature deviations like these. Tonight's worst weather will be from the far west of the convergence lighter in the main portion actually and stormy as you swing northeast. If you remember yesterday's watch zone for Europe, the storms battered the Emerald Isle and this was the scene in Belfast. Homes and property affected. Storm zones won't shift much tonight, mostly sticking to that strongest convergence from the North Atlantic low. Got a low in Western Australia, dominating the wind drive and interaction. Small moisture flow over New Zealand as well. In today's Fly on the Wall, we'll discuss Comet Siding Spring only a day away, begin discussing the effects of a rapid pole reversal, and also a secret weapon of the global economy. These hour-long podcasts are for members of the website. It is a whopping sum of $3 per month or the bank-breaking total of $20 for an entire year. We greatly appreciate your support. You got shots of our star to close, and with Helio Viewer Down, we're at SDO and Iris. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.